Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 3130, Modern Geometries for Students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In lecture 20, uh, we're going to introduce the idea of the triangle inequality, uh, which we will present in the next video of this lecture, not this one. Uh, but in order to talk about the triangle inequality, a very important result in congruence geometry, we have to understand what it means to add together segments. Now, I should mention that when we first discuss these six um, congruence axioms due to H David Hilbert for Euclidean geometry, and those six congruence axioms is what defines for us a congruence geometry, you know, when equipped with the incidence and between us axioms as well. In that setting, we had one of the axioms, it was the third one on the list, I believe, it was actually called segment addition, which essentially told us that uh, when there's a correspondence between uh, congruences of segments under the right assumptions, then this also means that the union of the corresponding segments would be uh, congruent as well. And so it is appropriate to call it segment addition. But from an algebraic point of view, there was no operation defined when we talked about segment addition and likewise with the corresponding segment subtraction. Um, in this video, we are going to actually literally define an addition operation on segments so it actually makes sense to add together segments so we're really improving upon our notion of the segment addition axiom and realizing it as a binary operation which then justified its original name of segment addition as opposed to potentially something else like oh the segment between this axiom or something it was a really foreshadowing to the topic we're going to talk about right now so in order to add together segments, what that means is we're going to take two segments. So let's take the line segment AB and the line segment CD. And these are two segments that exist inside of a congruence geometry. Um, what we want to explain is what it means to add together two segments and thus creating a third segment, thus forming what we would call an algebra, a binary operation. And then we'll discuss some of the algebraic properties of this binary operation. Okay, so imagine we have these segments, you know, illustrated here on the screen. So we're going to have segment AB a, right there, segment CD perhaps right here. And so let me label these things so it's easier for us to follow along. Uh, this is what we're going to call segment AB. Uh, this will be the segment CD. And we're not assuming any congruent statements about these. These segments are not necessarily congruent to each other or anything like that. Now, by segment translation and by the extension axiom, there's going to exist a unique point E um, on the ray AB such that AB, excuse me, such that B is between AE on that ray and the segment BE is congruent to CD. Okay, so essentially the, the extension comes into play here is because our line segment uh, B, A, B can be extended in the direction of B. So we get something like this. Okay. And then there's going to be some point on this ray, which again, we've extended this ray. We've extended the ray A, B there. Or I should say we've extended the segment to, to the ray. Extension guarantees that such thing is plausible. Um, there's going to be some point E on this ray A, B, such that B is between A, E, as is illustrated. And we're going to have that the segment BE is then congruent to CD. So we are then going to require that these segments are then congruent to each other. Translation allows this to happen. Uh, and so the, the segment translation axiom allows this to happen. Extension, all of this comes into play right here. And so then we define the sum of the segment AB plus the segment CD to be this new segment AE. And we'll denote this as AB plus CD is equal to AE right here. And so this, what we call it a sum in this congruent sense, right? Because you have the segment AB, we have the segment BE, but the segment BE is just, it's congruent to CD. So in the usual sense of segment addition, um, We've put these two segments together and formed a bigger one. And that's what we mean, of course, by addition of segments here. Now, this is, this is an equality here, as in to say that we're saying that these two sets are equal to each other as sets. Um, these two sets contain the exact same amount of points. 
which of course the the set on the left is defined to be this set so uh no big deal there but what i have to make what i do have to explain to you and this is what i want to do for the next few minutes here in this video is explain that when we talk about the notions of segment addition this is really an operation on the equivalence class of congruence and not on the equivalence class of equality, which these are defined, right? This, this set is defined to be this set. So these are equal sets by definition, right? But what, what are some of the algebraic properties of this operation here? That, that's what I'm really trying to get to right now and which will it'll be very clear why we have to talk about congruence here. So we should mention some of these properties of this notion of segment addition. So first of all, what if we have some other segment you know, let's say we have some segment PQ uh, that is congruent to CD inside of our plane right here. Then in that situation, we're going to have that AB plus CD is going to equal the segment AB plus PQ. Because after all, the way we've defined segment addition is you take a copy of this segment translated translate it onto this ray, and that then gives us this point E. E would be the same point if we translated CD onto the ray or we translated PQ onto the ray. So we're going to get equality in that situation, but because they're equal, that also means they're congruent. But this is a real McCoy um, equality in that situation. But I also want to go in the other direction here. What if we take something like AB is congruent to PQ in that situation? Uh, not necessarily, not necessarily, well, let's use different points so there's no confusion here. We'll call this one RS, okay? In that situation, we're going to have that AB plus CD, that's one segment we could add together, but we also could take RS plus um, CD. These segments are not going to be equal to each other because the first one will be a subset of the line AB and the second one will be a subset of the line RS. And if AB and RS are different lines, then there's no way these two sets can be equal to each other. So be aware that, um, sure, if you swap two congruent segments in the second operand there, you're going to get equal sets. But if you swap the segments in the first operand, even if they're congruent to each other, you're not going to get equality here, but you are going to get congruence. And so this is what I was alluding to earlier in this video, that when we define um, this binary operation on sets, uh, on the, excuse me, on segments, we don't want to think of this as a set operation. We want to think of this as a congruence operation, that this sum uniquely determines the segment. It, um, up to congruence, that you could have different congruent copies, but when it comes to segment addition, we don't care which congruent copy. It's just the it's just the congruence class that we're identifying here. Um, this is there's an analogous uh, concept here uh, if you go into the realm of algebraic topology when we talk about the notion of homotopy. Um, one very important construction in algebraic topology perhaps sort of like the birth, you could say, of algebraic topology, at least as most students learn it, is the notion of a fundamental group, which we attach a group structure to a topological space. But when one defines the notion of composition um, of, of, the, of the objects in the fundamental group, um, it's not well defined if we just compose the functions together in the usual sense, but the the classes if you look at the homotopy classes of the loops inside of the fundamental class then it'll be well defined when you place an equivalence there so that's the, that's the analogy we want to put in this situation that yeah when we consider segment addition it's not well defined um, if you look at equality of sets but if you look at congruence of segments it is going to be well defined and that's what we care about because another important example here is if you take the set um, if you take the set a b um, notice it's equal to the set BA. As a set, these are two, the two exact same symbols here. In particular, they're congruent to each other, but AB as a segment is equal to BA. It's, it's literally the same points on the line there. But if we define the segment sum, um, if we take the segment AB plus CD, and then you take BA plus CD um, in this situation, the two sets the two operands here are literally the same set, 
but still these two are not equal to each other as sets because after all the direction um, is implicit here that that is when you think of the segment a b you extend it to the ray a b but here when you think of the segment b a you're going to extend it to the ray b a and that's going to tell you where you put this point e right do you put it so that b is between a and e or is it going to be over here somewhere so that a is between b and e that's a different set and so these these two segments we add together are not the same segment with regard to equality but with regard to congruence it's going to be the exact same set so that matters there so as you switch as you switch the first operand or the second operand with something congruent then the segment sum will still be congruent to each and every one of those so that's an important concept there um, i should also mention that if you take the segment sum a b plus the segment sum cd um, and then you consider cd plus a b um, which if you switch the order here again as a set this is not going to be the same set but uh, and, and the reason for that of course is in the first one you take cd and copy it onto the ray a b but in the second one you're going to take a b and copy it and put it on the ray cd so these are again if these points are non-collinear then these aren't the same rays these aren't the same lines you're not going to get the same set in the end but as i keep on emphasizing while they're not equal as sets they are going to be congruent as segments and so this operation of addition is well defined with respect to segment congruence and with respect to segment congruence it's going to be commutative the order of the segments doesn't matter for the congruence class um, it does matter on the set itself but when we talk about things like the triangle inequality and things like that it's the congruence class that matters not not the actual um, set and basically why do we care about the congruence class well we haven't introduced any notion of measure inside of our geometry yet we don't have things like distance or metrics or lengths of line segments but the idea here is we, we're trying to think of it in a, in a in a primitive manner that if a segment had a length and this one had a length well the length is going to be preserved and so in euclidean geometry the congruence class of a segment is determined by its length um, and therefore this operation is just adding together positive real numbers in that setting but we're trying to do this in a more general setting okay so we have a binary operation which is well defined on congruence classes and it's going to be commutative what other algebraic properties can we get from this well um, this operation is in fact going to be associative uh, so what does that mean here so if i take the segment a b and i add to it the segment c d this is a binary operation so it's only it's only defined for two segments added together then if you add to, add to it the segment e f so i want you to be aware what happens here in this situation you're going to take a copy of cd you're going to glue it onto the ray ab and this is going to give you some longer segment that lives on on the ray ab then you're going to take and you're going to have some point you know you're going to have some point d at the end of it d prime maybe then you're going to take ef and you're going to glue that onto this ray as well okay um if we went the other way around if we took ab and you add to it cd plus ef like so so what if you switch up the operations what if you add together cd first so what's going to happen cd and ef this one would mean you're going to glue a copy of ef onto the ray cd and then what that turns out to be is you're going to glue that onto the ray ab so i should mention that in this situation um it actually looks like we would have equality in that in that situation that because of the order of operations here you're, we're always putting preference on uh, the first factor here so in the end in both considerations you end with a segment on the ray a b but like because of the issues we saw beforehand i don't actually care if they're equal or not i mean they are but i don't actually care what i really care about is that they're congruent because in some of the situations above it's it's not well defined if we don't have congruence um if it's just equality it's not well defined um but under under this we are going to have an associative operation here how we do parentheses doesn't matter and therefore it makes sense to take sums with three elements four elements five elements 12 elements it doesn't really matter because we have an associative operation um, and so because of the associative property it actually makes sense to take multiples 
of things inside of this uh, this this binary operation. So it makes sense to take a b plus a b plus a b plus a b. You could just add it together over and over and over again uh, because the parentheses don't matter whatsoever. And so we define this to be, let's suppose we have n different a, b's in that sum right there. We then define this to be n times a, b. And so this would be an example of a multiple. Because if we have addition, then in some respect, we also have multiplication. Multiplication by, of course, a positive integer at the moment. Uh, because we we could understand that just to be, we add together the segment n times. And therefore, with this definition of with this definition of multiples, then we have a distributive property in play right here. That if you have n times a b and you have c d right here, this is going to be congruent to the segment n times a b plus n times c d. So we have the distributive property. Oops, distributive property in this situation because uh, because we have a notion of bound multiplication. Now be cautious here, we're not multiplying together two different segments, uh, we're just adding it together over and over and over again. Um, but this, what, what can n be in this situation? Well, for this definition right here, it makes sense that n is gonna be some type of positive integer. Um, could it make sense for zero? What would zero mean? In this situation, you take a together zero times. Um, we are going to define that to be the segment a a, like so. Um, which, of course, if you take the segment a a, this is actually a degenerate um, segment. It's really just the point. And so we'll think of zero times a segment as just a point. Now, up to congruence, all points in the geometry are the same thing. So while the set definition will be, oh, you're just going to grab the left endpoint of the segment. Um, be aware that if you did something like 0 times BA, this will give you B. Points are congruent to each other. Uh, th that's we, we, we never really defined um, we never really defined the notion of congruence of points before this moment. But after all, if you think of as if you have these degenerate um, segments, a, A, B, B, these are just points. Uh, we would then expect these to be congruent to each other because uh, you can always just glue on a point to the end of something without changing it. And so we, yeah, we, we are, it's very natural to consider points as congruent to each other. All points are congruent to each other. And so uh, the zero multiple of a line segment, we then define to be just the point A itself. And this is an interesting observation here because if I take a segment A, B and I add to it any point, which of course the point is just the segment PP, like so. What this means is we're going to take the segment PP and glue it onto the end of the segment AB. But if you just glue on a point, it doesn't change anything. And therefore you're gonna get back something that was the just the original segment AB. I mean, it's, and I should be emphasized, this is actually equality in this situation. If you take AB plus a point, you're just going to get back AB. Those are equal, but like we said before, we don't care about equality. Congruence is what we're saying here. So if we're equal, then we're congruent. But there are some places where um, you have to have congruence and equality is not possible. So this operation of addition does in fact have an identity element. If you add together if you add on a point, which is just zero times a segment, that gives you an identity for this binary operation. So this operation is commutative, it's associative, it has an identity. Um, so it's very tempting to be like, oh, maybe we have some type of like abelian group structure happening here. Uh, well, do we have inverses? That's the thing to kind of consider right now. Do we have inverses? Well, we sort of do. What does that exactly mean here? Well, we now can talk about integers um, which have non-negative um, multiples. I should really should say that n could be a non-negative number. So it could be a natural number, zero or a positive. Does it make sense for n to be a negative number? Well, in an essence, we can do that. And so what we're gonna do is the following. So we're gonna define negative n here, where n of course is positive, so n, negative n is now negative. We're gonna take negative n times a segment a, b. Uh, we're going to define this to be the unique segment on the ray. So this is gonna be a subset of the ray negative a, b. 
So remember what this notation here means. Um, if we have some ray AB, so that we have say A right here, and we have some B over here, and this is the ray, the negative ray, that is negative AB, is in the ray that is the other half of the line determined by A and B. So it's going this direction, like so, for which this would be negative AB as a ray, and this, of course, over here is the ray AB, like so. Okay, and so then we're going to define we're going to define the segment negative n times a b as the ray that's on excuse me as the segment that lives on the ray negative a b that's congruent to n uh, a b. Okay, so basically, so instead of n uh, n a b would be over here on the ray a b negative n a b is just going to be a congruent copy of it on this ray so really what negatives here are representing is direction do we go in the direction of a b on that ray or do we go on its opposite ray uh, negative a b so in that essence congruence uh, doesn't make much of a difference when it comes to negatives versus positives uh, because the direction will be the same thing here and in this situation we do have that negative n times a b is in fact going to be congruent to the segment n times a b like so uh, the negative sign is really just giving us a direction so if we do need to distinguish between um, sets then we can use negatives but if we only care about congruence classes for the most part that's what we care about the negatives don't make much of a difference but we are going to allow it in case ever there is a possibility here um, there's one other thing and then so so this idea of a difference can then be described here we do have a notion of a difference for which um, we can take something like a b minus c d in that essence, what we're he having here is we're going to have AB, okay, and then we're going to add to it negative 1 times CD, like so. Um, and so this is all just about direction. So when you have CD over here, um, instead of putting it over here, uh, we're just going to go the other way around. We're basically going to put it over here. And so that's what it means to subtract these things. Uh, and so from a set theoretic point of view, then this would give us the segment subtraction that we've talked about previously in this lecture series. Um, you know, what's the difference between them? And it could be that since CD is bigger, it's over here somewhere and it's in the negative realm. Do, 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 do. You know, clearly when these things have measure or coordinates and such, this makes a lot more sense. But we're trying to do it in an abstract sense where we don't need measure. We don't need coordinates to be able to do arithmetic with segments here. All right, there's one last type of arithmetic that we want to that we want to do, and I'm gonna draw one more segment for that one here. So imagine we have some segment um, A B like so. Well, by the midpoint theorem that we discussed previously, we know that there is in fact a midpoint to every sec segment. So the segment A B has a midpoint um, A M. Let's call M the midpoint there. So it's natural then to define one half a multiple of AB here, we'll define this to be the set AM, that is you take the left um, half because the midpoint by definition is gonna make the two segments congruent there. So we define half of AB to be this one right here. And so we can recurse this possibility here. We could then take one fourth times AB because this would just be one half times one half of AB. So when you cut AB in half to get AM, then you cut AM in half to get whatever that midpoint is. And so we could then take more and more and more of these powers. So we could take 1 8th, 1 16th, 1 32nd. We could keep on going and going and going. Uh, but you can also add that together. Like I could take, I could take 1 4th of AB and then add it together three times, you know, to get, to get this segment right here. Um, and so in general, um, you can take you can take anything of the form a over 2 to the k times times a b here where in this situation we're going to have that a is an integer and k is some natural number it's a power of 2 and these numbers right here these numbers a over 2 to k this is what we refer to as a dyadic rational number so rational numbers of course are ratios 
of integers. Um, and our numerator can be any integer you want, but the denominator can only be a power of two. Um, we can't necessarily take one third of a line segment, at least not in congruence geometry. Um, this will lead on. This will lead later on to the notion of. Uh, of continuity that we'll get to in a different lecture here. But for this concept right here, um, we because of the properties of congruence geometry we've, we've talked about so far, we can add and subtract segments. Um, it's going to be an associative. It's going to be a commutative operation. There's an identity there. We can use subtraction to cancel things out. Uh, so from an algebraic point of view, it's looking pretty good. We also have a notion of multiplication. Um, we can multiply any segment by a dyad dyadic rational number where the numerator could be any integer and the denominator could be any power of two. And so we have now this arithmetic on segment congruence um, for which without any notion of continuity, we can't do better than the dyadic rationals. Uh, but at least for any congruence geometry, we do have this dyadic rational number. We need continuity to improve upon those scalars in the future. Uh, and so I do want to close this video by also very tersely introducing the notion of angle addition, okay, where this is a binary operation on angles here. So let me define it here. So given two angles, ABC and DEF, and so if we were to sketch the picture here, we would have something like, here's the angle, uh, we'll call this one ABC, like so. And then we have some other angle, DEF, that might be over here, which of course, they don't have to be the same size or anything. The orientation doesn't really matter too much. We have DEF. So what does it mean to add together two angles? Uh, so in that situation, it's going to be similar to what we did with segment addition. So when we have two angles, ABC and DEF, let P be the unique point in the half plane of BC that's opposite of A, such that CBD is congruent to the angle DEF. So we're going to add some new point in the situation here. So we have some new point over here, uh, which... We call this point now P. And so by angle translation and all that jazz, we then have the angle CBD that was just constructed. It'll be congruent to the original angle DEF, like so. And of course, uh, the, the angle P is going to live in the same half plane that C does with respect to the line um, AB. But of course, P and A are going to be on opposite sides of the line BC. That was what's mentioned beforehand. So then the sum of the angles ABC and DEF will then be defined to be the angle ABD, uh, ABP, excuse me. Uh, so we get that this angle here is then the sum of the two angles. Uh, and we then have this binary operation on angles. So analogously, we can extend all the notions of segment sums to this angle sums like commut commutivity, um, which I should mention that this angle sum, just like the segment sum, it's not well defined in general. So we really just care about congruence classes here. When you add two angles together, it'll be well defined up to congruency. And so with that notion, if you define this as an operation on congruence classes, then it'll be commutative, it'll be associative. You can have dyadic multiples that'll satisfy the distributive property. Now, unlike segment sums, it is possible that that there are sums of two angles, um, they could be undefined. Uh, and this would be the case where because um, when you try to add them together, you get something larger than a half angle. Um, the construction here does require some statements about half planes and such. And so if you took two big angles, like if we took a 120 degree angle plus an 130 degree angle, if we add those together, this definition doesn't allow for such a thing because we... Uh, we can't get an angle bigger than a half angle by our current construction. Now, angle measure will allow us to get around such a thing. Um, so if we do have 120 degrees and 130 degrees, maybe we do have angle measures. But the idea is, do we have, if we have two obtuse angles, we can't necessarily, we can't add those together the way we've defined um, angle sums right now. Because an obtuse angle, what's an obtuse angle? An obtuse angle is just an angle that's larger than a right angle, and an acute angle is an angle that's less than a right angle. Those make sense in congruence geometry but we can't add together two obtuse angles because that gives us something bigger than uh, a flat angle, which is a limitation for now, 
measure will be able to take care of that in the future. But if you don't have any angle measures, like in a generic congruence geometry, we can still add them together and we get this nice algebraic, I should say this nice arithmetic on angles, just like we did um, with sums of segments.